Hi there, homeschool moms and dads. So the most common um, comment that, or like thing that gets said in comments when it comes to our channel seems to be, oh my goodness, you guys do this in such a weird way. You're using this material or this curriculum or this tool in such a bizarre fashion. I'd like to see more. I'd like to understand it better. So I thought I'd do like the classic homeschool channel video on the different styles and then kind of talk about, okay, so where are we? So spoiler alert, we're eclectic. Um, and that is like the weirdest, most all encompassing um, basket term, umbrella term for homeschool families. Um, so let's get into what all the other ones are so that you can understand what we are. Traditional school at home is characterized by replicating the public or private school style of education with textbooks, workbooks, and typically boxed curriculum, all from one manufacturer. Typically, they have a strict adherence to a schedule. So the first category that I'm going to talk about is the traditional homeschooling, box curriculum, school at home model. So this is what most homeschoolers probably, I don't know, I don't have statistics. This is what most homeschoolers probably start out with and definitely what we started out with um, when our daughter was fairly young. Um, she was in that like K4, K5 and we got her a Calvert homeschool box curriculum because I wasn't very good at researching homeschool curriculums yet. And I was kind of, you know, like all homeschoolers scared and we were testing it out and we were trying to see, you know, are we going to do homeschool? Is this too much? Is this something we can handle? Um, is this something she can handle? So we got a all-in-one box curriculum and we found out pretty quickly that was not going to be it for us. It felt asymmetrical to the child's needs. So one of my biggest issues with box curriculums is the idea of you click a button and you order the whole, you know, kindergarten or first grade or second grade curriculum from one company and everything's at that level. Which is kind of what you're trying to get away, or at least what we were trying to get away from, from the public school model, because that's not how humans work. So, you know, that's why we say that, you know, this person's at ad advanced in math or behind in language arts or whatever it is, because not everything is going to match up to that level. It's kind of the you know, bell curve mentality of, well, this is kind of the information that most kids at this age, and it's not even like the kids are actually in the same age because everybody's birthday falls in a different point. And I am a huge believer that, you know, kids that, you know, cooked a little bit longer are a little bit more advanced than kids that came out a little bit faster. I don't know, because they're just, they, they are older. Anywho. Traditional homeschooling is the school at home box curriculum. You order everything and it's workbook style, um, very check off boxes and finish this curriculum and you're done. It's, it's a wonderful place to start. It really is. It definitely told us that not only were we willing to do this homeschool thing, we were willing to go way farther in, all in. So we definitely tried that. Classical homeschooling is based on a three-part process of grammar, logic, and then rhetoric, with an emphasis on Latin and memorization, and also Greek and Roman history and philosophy. Next, I wanna talk about classical homeschooling because A, we are classical homeschoolers in a sense, um, and B, it's kind of, if there's going to be something that's the most similar to traditional schooling, you know, or the most rigorous or something, it's probably going to be classical homeschooling. It is the very traditional, 
see, traditional school, classical, ah, ah. It's the way people have been learning information for literally thousands of years. It goes back to ancient times. It goes back to um, the Greeks and the Socratic method and the way that, well, for us, haha, the way our rabbis teach um, and we're taught back in, you know, the time of the Babylonian Talmud and all of these things. So it is the traditional way of educating, right? So we definitely, you know, do CC. We do classical conversations and we do Memoria Press and that's another classical curriculum. We don't do it the way they intend us to do it, but <laughs> we do it and we do a lot of it. Um, so I love the classical mo model. I love the different stages, you know, where you teach to the age, to the mental development of, you know, what kids are best at learning at that age and stage. So, you know, the little kids are learning rote memorization and you kind of start folding in deeper information and it clicks later on. My daughter to, said to me, you know, last night, she was, you know, singing a little song, a little CC song about um, feudalism in Japan. And she was like, you know, the first time I heard this song, I had no idea what feudalism was. This song makes a lot more sense now that we've been studying feudalism. Like, yes, it does. <laughs> that, that, that is the point. Excellent. Um, so the, the classical model builds on itself. You know, you get the rote memorization, then you dive deeper, then you start questioning and arguing, and you go through the different... Um, methods and you go through the same information over and over and over again. And I love that because I am a like intense nerd. So <laughs> the like rote memorization and wanting to understand everything and wanting to put it all together and those like connection moments where you're like, this was happening here while this was happening here while this was happening here. And that all happened because this happened back then over here. That stuff the best stuff. So classical homeschooling. I don't know if that explained classical homeschooling at all, but that's what I think of it. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is Montessori homeschooling. I will fully admit I am terrible at Montessori. Um, I really, really love it and I buy a lot of the toys and they're beautiful and I end up putting them in boxes and storing them because I don't want my kids to mess them up. I also bought them too early. So I bought a lot of the toys that are like three plus um, because the ones that were little, little, little kid ones, um, they looked boring and dumb. And my son is not ready for them yet, but I do love the idea of Montessori homeschooling. So Montessori homeschooling um, is another like fairly historical thing. It's been around for a very long time. Um, there are whole philosophies on, you know, having child-sized furniture and keeping things low and accessible and not overwhelming them with too many things and having, you know, very structured, directed play. Um, and you have like the little three-part cards and it's very teacher intensive. It's very space specific. Um, I love it and I'm terrible at it. So there's that. You should watch lots of other videos and I'll, you know, maybe see if I can link to a couple other YouTubers that are really, really great at Montessori um, that I like, fangirl over and then realize that I'm never gonna do that. Unit study, working all subjects through one central theme, pulling in games and field trips to enhance the experience. Unit studies. So I do really love unit studies and we definitely incorporate them when we can. Um, they're kind of our way of taking a break from other stuff. Um, or conversely, our way of diving ridiculously deep into something. So a good example of like unit study curriculum would be um, 
the Gather Round Homeschool, anything the Waldock Way puts out, and they're fantastic unit study folks. They're also very eclectic, but they're good unit study folks. Um, it's the idea of you take one topic, you dive super deep into it with lots of read-alouds and picture books and games, and you try to incorporate all your subjects into one topic, and you use that topic as the gateway into everything else. It's really fun. It's really cool. It's also very teacher intensive <laughs> in the collecting of all these things. And it can be very expensive because you're collecting all these things or very inexpensive if you're a great library person or you um, utilize, you know, things you already own and lots of free printables but for us it's not a everyday thing it's a we really need a break from the everyday thing so um like we actually keep a lot of gather round and waldock way um homeschool unit studies on hand and we pull them out when we are taking a break from other stuff when you know, either we're going on the road and we just want like one binder to <laughs> grab and take with us so that we're not grabbing a whole bunch of things. Or when my husband's sick, because my husband has some chronic illness stuff that sometimes he's out for two weeks. And then it comes down to like me and my sister and my grand, you know, and grandparents to kind of all pull together and homeschool my daughter. <laughs> So if we're sending her off to somebody else, we're not going to send her with, you know, a backpack full of 50 books going like, here's all of our stuff. Do this because that's ridiculous. They're not going to do it. They're just going to let her take two weeks off, which isn't really something we're comfortable with. So we send her with a gather around unit study. They're very open and go and easy. And the only like extra material you really need is a phone with YouTube on it. And then you are good to go. So she does a lot of that when my husband has an attack. Um, so unit studies are absolutely fabulous and we incorporate them all the time. The Charlotte Mason philosophy encourages loving books over textbooks, positive habits, short age-appropriate lessons, narration, dictation, art and music, and nature study. Charlotte Mason homeschooling. I would say we incorporate a large amount of Charlotte Mason into our stuff in that we are extremely um, literature and read aloud based that is only scratching the very, very surface of Charlotte Mason homeschooling. So when you see a curriculum that says it's Charlotte Mason inspired, um, you're typically gonna see poetry studies and art studies and drawing incorporated into things like language arts and geography um, and history. And you know, for a history curriculum that's Charlotte Mason based, you're gonna see Here's a whole bunch of novels to read. Um, so we definitely follow some of that. When it comes to the actual philosophy, it's not my cup of tea. Um, for instance, I don't like poetry. I really actually kind of dislike poetry. I like incredibly structured poetry because I find that to be math. I don't like reading it, but... <laughs> I'm perfectly fine composing it as a mathematical exercise. You know, I enjoy, you know, doing a Shakespearean sonnet and counting everything out and, you know, making sure things rise and fall the way they're supposed to. That's fun. Appreciating the beauty in a very boring genre painting, not my deal. But if you love those things and you want to incorporate those things into your daily life, as a homeschooler, if you like the nature study and nature walks, um, instead of like the hardcore book learning science, that is a wonderful approach. We do this much. 
The Waldorf approach, much like the classical approach, is divided into three stages. It focuses on music, handcraft, art, and low on tech. So another style that is really, really cool is Waldorf. Um, I will fully admit that this is a style I just do not incorporate at all. Um, it doesn't fit our personality. Waldorf homeschooling, and I'll try to link to um, this really lovely lady that I like binge her stuff, or I did. I don't think she's producing as much anymore. Um, but I used to binge her stuff because it was beautiful and wonderful. Um, but it's kind of Charlotte Mason. It's kind of unit study, but it's a lot of handcraft and um, oral narration and written narration. Um, it incorporates a lot of art and nature into the schooling. Um, and it's, it's very different. Like the, the Waldorf curriculums that teach you science and math look nothing like traditional science and math. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous homeschooling method. Um, it is not for me, but I love seeing others do it. Road schoolers and world schoolers utilize travel, lived experiences, and the natural world to create meaningful experience-based learning. So the next two, I'm going to kind of group together. So road schooling and world schooling. Um, road schooling is very self-explanatory. You pack your kiddos into a van or an RV or something, and you go explore and you learn through field trips um, and through exploring the world around you, visiting different cities, it's geography and culture and history and science. If you're going to a lot of museums and stuff, it's everything all at once. And you're on the road, so you have, you know, a captive audience with limited access to the internet, which is amazing. We get so much more done when we are road schooling than, you know, when we can cave to letting them get on their iPads. Anywho, road schooling is absolutely amazing. However, it is obviously expensive, especially with gas prices where they are. <laughs> and having to, you know, you don't have to eat out. Actually, when we go road schooling, especially in like an RV or something, we definitely go to grocery stores. We don't like go through a lot of fast food and stuff. Um, we also have some dietary restrictions that make grocery stores the better choice. Um, world schooling then is kind of the expanded form of that instead of being in an RV and traveling around and looking at national parks or something. Um, you're maybe taking that RV from Alaska down to the, you know, um, down to the tip of Argentina or something. You're traveling internationally. You're getting on cruise ships and going around on a world tour. You know, you're exploring on a much more expensive level. This is obviously intensely expensive um, and not something we have achieved yet, but so cool. Eclectic homeschoolers are highly individualized educators that mix and match a variety of homeschooling resources and styles. So all of this is to say that we are eclectic. We take a big variety of anything and everything. We look at all the different methods. We look at all the different tools, all the different games, all the different styles, all the different curriculums, and piece together what we think is gonna suit our kids best at this particular moment, at this particular stage, at this particular age, at this particular interest put it all together and see what we get. Um, this is by no means the cheapest way to do it <laughs> or the easiest way to do it, but I don't think our minds are suited for anything else. I think um, we in particular, me in particular, um, need something different and something highly individualized and something that is going to let us 
try lots of things, change our mind 50 different times, and get kind of this wide breadth of experience and knowledge and put it all together and create something really beautiful for our individual kids. Um, what this means is that what we're doing works for us and it's not necessarily gonna work for everyone. It's probably not gonna work for anybody else, but it might be interesting <laughs> and it might be something that um, others can kind of grab little bits and pieces from and make something of their own out of. So that's us. That's decadence homeschooling. Um, and that's how we got our name. You know, it's not about minimalizing and finding the easiest path forward. It's about maximalizing and looking at everything and trying everything and um, trying to get every experience every little bit of knowledge and doing it our own way. All right, thanks so much. I hope you got something out of this. Um, I do know that when I was in my first like year of homeschooling or that very, very important pre-homeschooling year um, where I just did like a crazy amount of research, I found this kind of stuff super helpful. Um, I watched a lot of explain the different styles to me videos and I learned what I liked and what I didn't like out of each of them. And that really helped me kind of figure out what, what our style was going to be and what our style was and then how to ditch that idea and move more in one direction one year and more in another direction the next year based on where we were at in our life. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful homeschool day and thanks so much for watching. Bye.